So your question, is there a choice actually? Is there a choice? Do we have free choice at any given moment? Or is it all just happening and nothing we can do about it? You have some limited choice, not total choice. You have limited choice. If you had total choice, you'd be doing exactly anything you want to do. You do it, no? If you had the total choice to be the architect, the sole architect of your own existence, you'd make a mess of it. I'm sorry. <laughs> we have some choice because consciousness uh, expressing itself as humanity, hmm, knowing that it comes into a more contracted state actually by identifying with the person or personality, hmm, it must uh, cut some slack for its expression as a person to have the sense of choice. It's part of the play of the game. So some choice is there. You see, like this. But total choice, no. May I give an example um, uh, yeah. in terms of behavior? Uh. Um, if uh, my children are really misbehaving and I become very angry, uh. and there's the impulse to swat one on the behind, mm. and then I stop myself in that moment, yes. then I'm making a choice. Yes. Yeah. So I'm making that choice, or it's just happening. This this point for me is it's very both. Important. It's both. Yeah. It's both. It, this is a very delicate subject, very very deep. We can open up this world, big world, yeah. of choice, no? About choice. In a sense, you can say, even this choice to I, I stop, also. Uh, uh, this thing about choice now linked to you can say destiny even. Hmm? So it says also, if you make a choice to do this. It was already a kind of destiny you would make this choice also. You see? I would say about this, if you feel suffocated by the idea that there is no choice, then forget about this idea there is no choice. Uh, use your choice. Great. Okay? Great. There comes a time when you realize really there is really no real choice. Uh, but that is a great freedom. If not having a choice, great freedom, great, you've discovered something. Is having no choice makes you feel tied up, it's a bad idea, forget about it. Use your choice. You see? I also think that the concept of having no choice uh -huh. can, can be abused. It can be an excuse for really bad behavior. Yes. So that's, this is a very yes. delicate question. And yes. As long as consciousness has the sense that it is a person, it has sufficient choice making ability uh, to move uh, in the life, and somehow the consciousness in that modification uses the sense of choice to refine its consciousness, to become more uh, evolved in its own, in that stream. You see? But it's not an excuse, uh, you know, okay, you know, well, nothing I can do, it just happened. Yeah. There's nothing I can do, it just happened. You see? And you know. When the people speak like this also, mm, you uh, also will come more and more to recognize it's not true. It's not true. Because there's a peace about truth also. When someone is doing this, and you know, you know they got a fish in their pocket. <laughs> huh? They're saying this kind of stuff, showing you a nice chocolate cake, mm, smell like sardines, okay? <laughs> In the thing, many times people listen too much with the words, and but when you listen more and more energetically, this is something happening spontaneously. By the way, the more you are centered, recognize your own self, the you are able to more uh, read, and understand, feel the world more energetically. Then you see, but that's just you're just saying that it's not true. You see, real choice is being able to cut the attention from running with the mind and keeping it back inside the awareness seeing. This is a real choice. This is excellent choice making. 
Can you say that again, please? <laughs> I'm usually not good at that, okay. but okay. I'll try. You know, okay. The best choice no, is to stop the attention from pursuing whatever projections or thoughts is pulling it, to go with the mind, or go with the past, go with intention, go with desire, go with attachments, go with projection, and keeping it back into just the observing. Keeping it back, just, just be the Self, bringing it back always to the Self. This is powerful choice, because that will shape everything that comes after. When you are able to somehow register, recognize that you are only the witness, effectively, in this play, there is tremendous power in the, in the witness. It might seem like a very passive, inert state, but it's very dynamic, very powerful, that stillness, in which everything is seen, everything is seen intuitively, without getting busy and noisy. It's just an understanding is present in you. And then your discerning powers are working very efficiently and very effectively. You will know what is a waste of energy, and uh, somehow guide your powers to be in the right, to operate in the right way. Or it functions spontaneously or automatically, whichever way. So where there is a natural feeling of choice, exercise choice. When you come to a certain point where choice or no choice means no, no, nothing at all for you, the life is just spontaneously unfolding. And whether it goes this way or that way doesn't make any difference for you, because you have found that which is beyond all directions. And in any particular shape you put it, it is supremely content. Then this idea about choice, it will not trouble you. But as long as we have the sense of an independent existence, as being a particular person, uh, to the same extent, uh, choice making will be a virile mm, state. Are we there yet, or are we going a bit more? Okay. So um, now I'd like to say to you what great blessing, how lucky I am, how lucky we are to be graced with your presence and your eloquence. It's true. <laughs> and relating and your unrelenting, <laughs> crystal clear clarity. Thank you. Okay, got to love, also love to you from from family at home and brother. Okay. Did we get somewhere with this somehow? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Check in with yourself. Your natural state is inwardly uh, space, not noise, not turmoil. And if turmoil come, it's appearing in this expanse of that space. Everything comes and goes. Everything is a tourist there, comes and goes. No residence there. And then like this, somehow you find whatever is needed in the moment. I'm not talking about whimsically, but the needs of the moment not driven by, not projected by uh, egoic thinking, but natural need functioning, everything is taking place by itself. I am not even going to talk about a beautiful, sweet existence. No, just whatever is taking place. All-inclusive. All-inclusive. The real truth about this world cannot be explained. There are things that you will see in the light of your own consciousness, you will not know how to explain them, and there is no need to do it.
and nothing is going to stick on you. Nothing is going to stick, embed themselves inside you. It won't happen. Everything momentary, it's fine. Some memories will last longer than others, some things will be there longer, but all of them are transient ultimately. Everything is passing, including the idea you think of who you are is also passing. If you feel a bit of pain, don't block this pain. Feel this pain fully and get over it. Have a blast of pain, a blast of grief and get over it. The rest is your eternal being. I have one more question. Yeah. And um, what comes up is uh, to be content with not knowing. To be content with not knowing, yes. Really, it should be to be content with only knowing who you are and not knowing the rest. Not knowing the rest, just knowing who and what you are. Not knowing intellectually, but being clear at least about what you are not. And then begins the magic, really. When you come to see everything, everything, uh, not being dismissive of the world cynically, not this, but everything is only an appearance in consciousness. There is such a deep knowing and peace in that. You are not passing. What is cannot pass, it cannot come either. It can neither come nor go. Has that recognition taken place? Yes? Who can truly be intentionless? Not as an act, but the outcome of an understanding, not carrying an intention. Momentary, superficially, yes, something we must do, yes, but not, uh, not demonstrating, not creating another ritual out of anything, everything superficially, momentarily. Is Amsterdam? You say? No. Where? I'm flying to Amsterdam. Uh, and then I go back to the Hague. Hague is where? An hour south of Amsterdam. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hague is vague at the moment. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, good, good.